The renowned and beloved book by C.S. Lewis, The Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, has evolved. 98, 99, 100, ready or not, here I come. Edmund, Susan, Lucy, Peter, Aslan the Lion, The Wicked White Witch, The Magical Land of Narnia. These are characters and places that have loomed large in the imaginations of children around the world for more than half a century. They are the stars of one of the greatest series of books in children's literature, The Chronicles of Narnia. The Chronicles of Narnia are classic novels, and now The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe has been made into a blockbuster movie and video game, a new generation of children will be experiencing for themselves the magic of Narnia. On the first morning, the children decided to explore the big house. It was full of interesting things and unexpected places. One room had a suit of armor in it. Another, all hung with green, had a harp in the corner. And one room was quite empty, except for a big wardrobe with a looking glass in the door. Chronicles of Narnia have been phenomenally successful ever since the first publication of The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe way back in 1950. Um, they progressively sold more and more copies right around the world in about 30 languages. I think they're up to somewhere close to 90 million copies worldwide. The Chronicles of Narnia are the work of an English author, C.S. Lewis. A tutor at Oxford University and a good friend of J.R.R. Tolkien, author of Lord of the Rings, Lewis gestated on the ideas that he would later incorporate into his masterwork for many years. But it was not until 1950, when he was 52, that the first book in the series was published. Well, funnily enough, my stepfather C.S. Lewis had the nickname of Jack uh, from when he was a very small child. And when Jack was about 16 years old, one day there popped into his head the image of a fawn in a snowy wood with a whole bunch of parcels and an umbrella. And um, it made some kind of impression on him, but he never did anything with it until many, many years later when he was about 50. And he decided he would try to make a story out of that image and began to work on it. And at the time he was having nightmares about lions, one particular huge lion in, in particular. So he then found that the lion leapt into the story and dragged the rest of the story with him. That was really the origin of The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. Narnia came into my life, obviously, as a child. It was one of the first books that I really got into. And as a teacher, it's one of the classics that one feels obliged to deliver to children. The film The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe has been a very, very long time in gestation. Uh, I suppose I've been dreaming about it, scheming it, talking about it for the better part of my adult life. Uh, my, my sons, my children, they remember me all of their lives, dreaming, scheming, and talking about making a movie of The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. But it's also, of course, noteworthy that the technology has not existed to make a movie of it doing the book justice until very recently. But it's not just the movie that will bring the world of Narnia to life this winter. A new multi-million dollar video game developed in conjunction with the movie for the first time allows children to create their own adventures in the world of Narnia. Moving from the movie, which is a well-known, accepted medium nowadays, into the video game area is a great, it's an uplifting experience in some ways because every child throughout the history of the book has longed to be able to go to Narnia. I don't really think that anybody uh, amongst the general public has any idea of the background of what goes into making a movie to start with. But if you take then the making of a game from the movie, it's almost, it, it probably more complex in a sense, converting the movie into a game than converting the book into a movie. Los Angeles 2005, home to the greatest computer show on earth, E3. Ensuring that the video game joined seamlessly with the movie was the job of Andrew Adamson, the director of Shrek and Shrek 2, and now the director of the first Chronicles of Narnia movie. There's a very specific look to the world of Narnia, which I think is an original world that people haven't seen before. And we really wanted to make sure, in partnership, that the game had that look as well. Before we even started shooting the film, we were having discussions about how to integrate the film aspects into the game and vice versa. There's a lot of things that have been very important to me in the movie as far as the, the design, the use of color throughout the movie and I want to make sure that all of those same aspects were incorporated in the game. Basically, a very important part of the film is the world of Narnia. Cheshire, England. Home of game developer Traveller's Tales. Here, 
here the film was adapted into an interactive action adventure. I think this will mean a lot to the Narnie fans. I think, you know, it's the second biggest selling book behind Harry Potter. When the opportunity came up to do Chronicles of Narnia, I was thrilled. I'd, I'd been a great fan of the book since I was, I was pretty young. I read it when I was seven or eight, and, uh, and the tales really captivated me. It's my job basically to take the game through from uh, conception through to the final gold master. The biggest challenges we've got is obviously we're going uh, day and day with the film, uh, is making sure that the game that we produce uh, mimics the film that, 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 uh, that's going to get released. In, in the kind of first few, um, few days of filming, we, we had handy shots of locations and things like that, so which was fine for our level builders. We could kind of go out, build the sets that, that Disney were filming on. My name is Jonathan Shara. I am a level artist and I create the scenery, um, various scenes from the movie. In the feature length movie, uh, many of the backgrounds are completely computer generated and some some of them are detailed, full-size set pieces. To start the uh, level building process, we're first given these images uh, by Disney, along with the detailed blueprints, which are all surrounded by trees and growth, etc. From tracing over the blueprints, I can loft very simple shapes from these spines, go to a lofting of the surface, and you will see it fill itself in with a very simple shape here. I can now go into this shape, and I can manipulate it further. Over a series of hours, this will come closer to uh, looking like one of the houses from the Allies Enclave. So if I apply a rock texture, so now we look like we have a, a stone wall, eventually, after a series of hours, it looks a little more like this. Depending on the complexity and the size of the level, uh, the scenery can take anything from a couple of weeks to a couple of months. When we think that the scenery looks as accurate and as close to the movie, we're pleased with what we've got. The team at Traveller's Tales faced huge challenges in accurately adapting the movie into the game. Well, the animation in the game was something that's always one of the most important aspects of any game development because if the characters don't move naturally, it's the first thing the player notices. We receive uh, photographs of every maquette that's made of every creature, which is our first point of reference really. We can then give that to our model guys and they can start to, to build the creatures. I'm Anthony Whiteley and I'm lead animator on the Narnia project. Uh, well basically an animator rotates the joints in a skeleton to emulate the way a person or an animal would actually move, uh, which we do by drawing bones which you can draw them anywhere, they can be in the character here for instance. You can rotate them around here to leave these bones just like the bone in your arm, rotate around each other and once, once you've actually got that, basically you go through a process of uh, tweaking and moving these things around until you um, end up with something which looks like the animation you're after of say in this case a centaur patrolling the perimeter of Aslan's camp. Once the artists have built the levels, we obviously have to put them in the game. The more complicated process that we spend a lot of time on and, and uh, a lot of work in is putting the creatures into the game. So one of the first processes we go through is we have to lay out for the creatures pathways so that they know where to go. So for example, I can start laying out a path to bring the creatures round into the level. This describes how the creature can move around the level. I'm going to add into the game a minotaur. So now he knows how to move through the level, he's in the level obviously, and he now knows how to interact with the player, how to attack when he should stay back. Throughout the game, short animated movie clips called cutscenes help tell the story. I'm uh, Bill Martin, the lead cutscene animator on Narnia. Well, to the game as a whole, the cutscenes, um, apart from explaining to the player where they are and what's coming up in the game, they um, expand the whole experience, I think. They, they give you a taste more of the film and uh, make, give you a richer experience for when you're playing the game. Well, we start off with a level design document that outlines everything that's needed in each level. And within that, we're told what cutscenes are needed. Uh, from that, Disney supplies us with a storyboard, which gives an outline of the general timing and the cuts and what characters are in there. So we uh, take the game level into the computer and place the characters and the cameras in there, cut it together so we have a rough timing so we know it's working okay. In this cutscene, Edmund's been captured by the baddies. The centaurs are coming to, to rescue him. When the scene's been blocked out and uh, all the camera cuts are in, then we hand over to the sound guy who will put in a uh, placeholder track with voices. Uh, 
My name is David Whitaker, and I'm the main audio guy at uh, Traveller's Tales. Uh, I get given a scene, say a cutscene, I have to splice a pre-recorded music to fit the length of the cutscene. Then I uh, create sound effects for specific actions like footsteps or explosions. In this cutscene we need a sword swipe, um, so I will grab several off uh, my CD archives. Then I would audition them. I would place it on the timeline in relation to where the switch needs to be. So the guy's going to swipe his sword. Huh? Who's there? Peter? Shh! I've come to get you out. Hurry! Huh? Oh, what have we here? My name is Mike Jacob, and I'm the executive producer for Buena Vista Games. The gameplay itself is, is really, I think, inspired in a lot of ways. And kind of the cornerstones that we really settled on were cooperation, collaboration, creatures, and of course, combat. One of the great design ideas was to be able to team the kids up, and you can actually link them together. So when their, when their power meter gets up to the top, you can actually run any of the two children up next to each other. Each of them connect up in different ways. And we leave it up to the player to choose how to link the kids up and when to link them up and how they want to use them. For instance, Peter might link up with Edmund and they actually do this great spinning move that's kind of reminiscent of a giant whirlwind. And as they're flying and flying around, they'll be able to take on creatures in combat. They can blast their way through objects or obstacles that might be too hard for them to do individually. If you want to sort of beat them up and jam through the game and just sort of attack your way, it works for you. But if you also want to maybe be a little more stealthy, a little more creative, we give you all the player all those tools to be able to do that. The game really offers anybody of any skill set or even gaming style to be able to succeed and have a great time and make the game their best experience. For instance, Lucy, if she does a perfect attack against an enemy, she can jump up on the back of that enemy and then give the player the ability to control and sort of be all of these different creatures that we're creating throughout the world. It's just quite amazing, really. It's staggering the amount of work and animation that has to be done to pull all of this together. For 18 months, the team at Traveller's Tales have been working on bringing this game to life. And the numbers of, of man-hours involved in this are just absolutely staggering. I don't think anybody has any idea. They sit down in front of a computer and they play the game and they go, wow, in our case they go, oh, wow. Uh, but they don't know the millions of hours that are spent in the complex procedures of translating it from images on the screen doing their own thing to images on the screen that you can control. Now with the new video games and the computer games, the children can actually not only get into Narnia, but they can control what their protagonist, what their particular character does in Narnia. So in a sense, they invent their own adventure. For me personally, it's a great honor really to work on a game of such size. I mean, the general feeling within the group is it's going to be, the film's going to be huge. You know, and to, to be a part of, of making a game for something that is going to be uh, so big is, is a great honour. Really. It's really exciting to be involved with, with the Chronicles of Narnia, to, to work with the director, to work uh, with the property, to, to meet Douglas and, and, and all the people involved with the, with the story, and to be part of, of that, that whole legend. It's, it's, it's a pinnacle, really, in, in my career in the games industry. Now, with the advent of these computer and video games that we're producing, taking off from the movie, People all over the world will, for the first time, without a wardrobe, be able to go to Narnia. Yeah.